Yo, what's good? Jahiti or Brownfish back. Terra Cafe Chronicles. We're here with a lovely, lovely person, human spirit, athlete. She hasn't been an athlete in some years, but I'm gonna throw that on there. <laughs> Love the poet. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I I'll give you a little brief um, background. Uh, Love and I both went to Coppin State College. We both ran track for Coppin State College. And, um, you know, when I, when I kind of, sometimes it like bugs me out. It's been over 10, ten, ten years. years or so. So, you know, people change in the course of 10 years if you're lucky and if you're doing something right, you should be changing. Right. And so I'm amazed to, to remember you before the poetry or anything. We were just people, yeah. we were just teammates. And now you are, you know, incredible. You have an incredible event, you have an incredible book, you put out incredible CDs. And I'm hoping that this interview can help someone else. Right. So, let me ask you, the book, the CD, the event, which one is the hardest, what took the most out of you to do? Knowing that the event goes on every Friday, last, you know, last Friday of the month, which, which one take? Out of the book and the CDs and book, all Book, CD, or, or the event? Um, the book, the book, the book um, was definitely, um, it was, it was a, a labor of love because it's a matter of typing the work. I have like 20 journals. It's a matter of typing the work, then looking over it, then deciding which ones you want to use, then retyping it, then giving it to people to edit, then, <laughs> then, um, then going back, you know, going back and going back, and it's like it was the best time of like getting my hands dirty in my work. I mean, I knew myself way better than I ever knew myself before, you know, putting it in print. You know. Well, you know, like um, I started, I read like three or four books at a time, mm -hmm. right? So I started reading your book, and I read every book from the cover to the cover. You don't skip no forward, no dedications or nothing, cover to cover. And so as I started reading it, the, the first poem. And if I'm not mistaken, it says something about airs being pillows or something to that yeah. effect. Like, ears are like pillows, so my words echo when they see. Say it again. Say it again. Um, ears are like pillows, so my ears. Uh, skin is soft, like. Mm. I have the book. Soft, you know. Like the skin of sheep. Oh, yeah, I can't really. Yeah, what is it? I can't remember. It. But it's like ears are like pillows, so my words echo when they sleep. Okay. Something like that. Once I read that, I realized that I didn't really know you. Straight up, like it was so intricate, and it hit me a certain way. I was like, yo, I don't really know her. And so I became excited about wanting to read the whole wow. book, you know? Wow. Wow. Just to hear all of the thoughts, all of it, you know? And um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Word. That's how they do it. Michelle Antoinette Nelson, that's the government right there. That's it, that's it. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. So I'm gonna ask you a few of the questions that I asked um, in my previous interview. As a, as an artist, do you feel a, a responsibility to have to write about the things that you care about in your personal life? Absolutely. As a as a poet, I started writing poetry because it was therapeutic. You know what I mean? So there's there's no way that I can't write about my personal life because that's my first and and only perspective. Is your personal life? Right, right, right. You know, you can see everything. You can make your you can make your assessment. You know, of, of it. But ultimately, your assessment stems from your personal life and what has framed your thought process. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I think it's imperative. It's it's like the only way to really be an artist. You know, if you, if every time I see a poet or somebody on stage and they're only talking about politics or they're only talking about somebody else's something, I I need to I need I I have asked them in the past like. I've asked them, what, I need to see you before I can understand your political views. I don't understand your stance, because I don't know who you are. Where's your confessional pieces? You know? so. Poets, uh, you know, I did a little bit of poetry back in the day, and it made, I found that people were more into like the sexual forms. Yeah. And you being a Punani, Punani poet, mm -hmm. how do you feel about, do you ever feel a pressure to do poems that maybe a person may classify as being a sexual type poem and do you, do you find like that cell ends up making you sell more albums and books and CDs and I she's also a guitarist? <laughs> I think that it has 
It has its benefits. I never feel pressure to do it. I do it because erotic poetry, when done correctly, is a gateway into everything else. For people who never heard poetry, if you do a, an erotic poem, they are now hooked, and it's good. They're now hooked on poetry, I found. Once people got my erotic mixtape, they wanted everything else I've ever created. And, and it's easier for an average person to connect with the erotica because sex is everywhere. Sex is everything. Everyone is, enjoys it. Everybody wants to do it. So it becomes so it becomes a major, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a point, it's a gateway. It's an entryway into poetry. So that's why when people do it and it's like this and stuff like that, it's like, oh, I understand it, but it's definitely something that I use as a tool. It's not my mainstay. It's actually a side thing. I, you know, not really a around the poet. All right, so <laughs> my last question is on the economic side. Okay. Um, Tui is scanning on her meal that she's waiting, that she's waiting to eat. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's a meal. And, and, and look at the plate next to it. That, that's what it is. It, it, <laughs> it started out just like this plate. <laughs> All right. So my, my, last, my last question for you is an economic question in terms okay. of your art. How many... Uh, sources of income do you have in, that's related to art? So we know you have the Be Free Fridays, which is the last Friday of the month. We know you have the book. We know you have CDs. We know you do workshops. How many different streams and, and, and which one is the most valuable to you right um, now? Um, I actually, I have those five um, and the workshops are actual like classes, one-on-two and one-on-one classes. Um, so those are like week-long things and a month-long thing that happened. Um, I also have my online store that's connected to my website, which brings in um, revenue when I'm sleeping. You know what I mean? Website is? Uh, www.lovethepoet.com. Okay. So I would so say six. about six. Um, that's also not counting the tours. Um, and like like the tours that I, that I have been setting up with different with various artists, I believe in, in um, working with people and setting up things like that. And that's not and that's not counting um, college gigs either, and college and, and schools and stuff because those are also coming up. So I guess I can lump into like the performance aspect of it. But um, right now, for some artists, I guess you could say I have about six major streams of income. Okay, and I know I said that was the last question. Oh, if we just start a cold. That's all right. Um, one international artist you would like to work with, and one local artist who is not sitting at this table. <laughs> oh man, um, international artist that I like to work with. That's 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 a tough one. Um, I think that. Uh -huh. Oh, word. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, definitely, Erica Badu. Oh, right. Everywhere across the globe, everywhere she raised me artistically. Thanks. Um, and uh, local, I would. There's so much talent here. It's hard to say that you haven't worked with. That you, I have worked done. With. I've worked yeah, with a lot yeah. of people. Um, I haven't worked with Jahiji. We haven't done that yet. Um, I wish it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and who else? Um, I, I, and and maybe maybe I might want to do like a MC or or, or or do a show with like Mark Evans. You know, all right, like all right, all right. you know, to just kind of blend in and see because he's so he's so crazy with it. Right, right, he's, right, and he's international too. Yeah, right? yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's that's definitely my vote. Huh. I also want to be on Ellen and on the Oprah Network. That's what it is. The Queen, Oprah. Okay, I'm going to the Oprah Network. All right, all right. You know, she's done with the show. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. She is the Queen. The Oprah queen. is the, the Queen. The master yeah. class comes on Sundays. I'm about to have people over. We're going to have some discussions. All right. About the master class. All right. Some real stuff. Well, listen. Once again, I'm Jaitia Brownfish. This is the Terra Cafe Chronicles. Love the poet has uh, has given us seven to eight minutes yeah. of her time to, to to move us along as a community, and um, we hope that you stay tuned. We hope that it wasn't too long. We hope that it was of some benefit to you. And one love, be kind to each other. We'll check you later.